Now we're going to automate the connection between the Google form, the contact sheet, and MailChimp, and the Gmail account. And this will allow us to create automated emails that will go out when certain things happen. So the first thing we need to go to do is go to zapier.com and sign up for the account. In this case, we're going to make it simple and just log in through Google. They want to know a little bit about what kind of business you have, so we'll fill in the information there. It's not critical. It's really more for their information. And then you can see a lot of the different types of things you can do. Now, we set up a free MailChimp account. We set up a free website. And now we're setting up using the free Zapier integrator. And this allows you to connect things like Google Forms, Google Sheets, Gmail, and automate things that happen. Get this set here. All right. So here we go. We are in Zapier. We are creating a Zap. And our trigger is going to be the Google Form, or excuse me, the Google Sheets, <laughs> the Google Sheet. And Zapier will look at this every 15 minutes. And if there's a new row in there, and that's what we're doing, looking for a new row, someone put in their information. And so when that happens, we're going to be able to get the information from that sheet and do something with it. And so we get this all set. Log in. Yep. Don't be discouraged. Sometimes uh, the systems are a little slow, but uh, once you get this set, it's going to work. So we've got the Google Sheets set up. So we've got the, the Gmail account set, and we've only created the one sheet. And so that was the contact form. And so we've got that. The responses, we've got that. So we've added that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look for a new row. And then you can see we've got responses. And that is a trigger. So when someone fills that in, that adds a new row. Google or the Zapier looks at that sheet every 15 minutes. And if there's a new row, that's a trigger. And so we've tested that and it's working because we tested the form. We added some information in there. So Zapier had something to look at, saw a new row. And now we can choose what we're going to do. And in this case, we're going to send an email. So using Gmail, so we're connecting up this Google Sheet with Gmail. And we want to send an email. So we choose that. And of course, Gmail wants us to sign in. So we will go ahead and sign in again. Again, don't be too discouraged about these things. It's just the systems take time and sometimes there's communications issues, so it may take uh, a few minutes here and there, but uh, don't dis get discouraged. So now we're going to set up and we said we want to send a new email and we're going to send this to the subscriber, to the person who filled out the form. So when they filled out the form and hit submit, it said your form has been submitted, but now it's going to go to their email and this uh, helps us validate that email. And so we send a message to them from, in this case, Paul White. We're going to send him the message. And we're sending it to them. They gave us their email. So we selected that. And uh, we're also going to send a blind carbon copy to ourselves. And you see, you can do it as a, as a carbon copy. And that way they'll see your email because they know it's coming from you and you copied yourself. So in this case, let's go ahead and leave it as a blind carbon copy. And then, uh, but we are sending it from the Paul White Gmail account. And then we're going to put in a subject line. 
And so we're just going to let them know that we've received their information. And so this is a quick subject line to let them know that their submission has been completed and that somebody is listening and will take action. So we're just letting them know what this is. So hopefully they'll actually open the email. And we're just using plain text again, same thing that, as we did with the MailChimp email. And in the body here, we're just going to be very simple, very quick, and just tell them thank you and let them know how long before someone gets a hold of them. In this case, we're going to say within one business day. Of course, the quicker that you get back to somebody, the better the sales rate. But there we go. So let's just get that entered in here. Now we just want to test that connection. And so we just test it and make sure that things are working. And if it's all good, then we can publish this. And so now we've got it published and it's turned on. We do want to name the zap to have the uh, name of the uh, process that we're doing. In this case, it's automating the email response to someone filling out the form.